I'm very excited to bring today's lesson because I watch a lot of TV shows in order to learn English. And I think that you can learn great English vocabulary through TV shows. And all of us do watch TV shows, right? So today's lesson, I'm going to help you learn English vocabulary through Squid Game. Now, why should we watch or why should you learn English through TV shows? That's the important question. So let me tell you that a lot of TV shows, they expose you to new English words and phrases, which means that you are learning new words, updated words, and you are renewing your English vocabulary. And obviously, since you know those new words, you are now equipped. You are now in a position to use these newly learned vocabulary to describe the story, right? How many of you would love to describe the story to somebody else? Well, you can do that if you learn the new words. And of course, according to research, do you know? You will learn English in the most effective way. How? Only when you learn with fun activities. We all enjoy watching TV shows, and that is the place to learn English in the most fun way and in the most effective way. So, in today's lesson, I'm going to help you learn English by helping you guess vocabulary by a process called inference. Now, let me tell you when we are children, how do we learn a language? We learn it through inference. So, what is inference? This happens when we are children. So as a child, when you hear people speak, you kind of guess the meaning of what they are saying based on the words used around that phrase, right? So inferencing is basically drawing conclusions or making a guess of the meaning of a word based on the other words spoken around it. Right? And while we're watching TV shows, we have to guess quickly because we're watching it and it's constantly moving. The conversations are flowing, so we have to guess through inference. I'll show you how to use inference in order to help you with the vocabulary. So, let's read the sentence and we will try to guess the meaning of this particular phrase. Squid Game is a TV series where 456 players who desperately wish to get out of debt compete in a contest to earn a total of $140 million. Now, I want you to guess the meaning of getting out of debt, but you have to inference, which means you have to guess the meaning based on the other words that you see around it. So can you see the words around it compete? earn, the money, right? And they are desperate. So these words will give you a clue about what this phrase may mean. So now I'm going to give you two options and I want you to select the correct one. So are these people just those who love money? Or are these people who are desperate, which means they want to pay back money? So in other words, if you want to get out of debt, it basically means you want to pay back money, you owe money to people. You have creditors running after you, asking for their money back. All right. Now, the next sentence, you should be able to find out the meaning by looking at this picture. I'm sure you've watched, whoever's watched the Squid Game, you've, you're aware of this particular game. Okay, so let's look at the next sentence. It says, in one of the challenges, the players had to cut out a shape like the shape we just saw in the picture, from a thin sheet of sugar. So cutting out a shape from something, what does it mean? Does it mean to cut a shape from a background or from a substance? Or does it mean to cut a shape and throw it out? Your clue is a thin sheet of sugar. Does this not refer to a substance? Well, it does, right? And therefore, this is the correct answer. So you're inferencing the meaning of this based on the words in the context. Now, another picture to help you understand the next sentence. There are so many people gathered out here. They're all the players who are playing the squid game. They're all competing, fighting with each other. So let's look at the next sentence. This series 
the TV show that is, it depicts how many people in the world, they run the rat race only to survive. Look at the clue words here. They're trying to survive and there are many people trying to survive. So what does the running the rat race mean? Does it mean individuals competing with each other for basic needs? Or does it mean we're talking about individuals competing in sports to survive? Think about it. Many people survive. Survive refers to basic needs, not luxuries. And therefore, when I say that I am running the rat race, it means I'm doing everything to get food, clothing and shelter. So I probably, if I'm running the rat race, I'm a person competing with so many other people only for my basic needs, only for survival. All right. Now, this is another picture where you can see a lot of people uh, probably dead here. Lots of blood. Is it too much to watch? Okay, I won't, I won't show you this anymore. But let's go to our sentence. Squid Game can be difficult to watch as it is very gory in its depiction. Nice word, but what does it mean? Does it mean that we're talking about something which is very hazy in appearance? Hazy means not very clear. And or does it mean we're talking about something which is very violent? Right? So if something is difficult to watch, it means that it is difficult to watch because it is very violent. You can watch it. Not because it is not clear, because it's difficult to watch due to the extreme nature of its content. Okay? So now I'm going to show you some really interesting idioms that are taken from the actual quotes in Squid Game. Okay, so if you've not watched Squid Game, you got to watch this. One of the characters says, you must not keep your eggs in one basket. What does that mean? It's an idiom which basically means you must not spread your risk in one investment. So if you are a trader, a day trader, don't put all your money in one stock, in one portfolio. Spread your risk because if one of your stocks does badly in the market, your money will not be completely lost, right? So a smart move, a smart idiom to actually implement in your real, in your real life, okay? So do not keep all your eggs in one basket. Spread your risk. Then you have another idiom which was actually used by this man here. He was one of the VIP, um, you know, people who was part of the show. And he says, when faced with danger, a person seeks refuge in the herd. You know what is a herd? A herd is a group of cattle, you know, many, many cows, many buffaloes together in the jungle. They seek refuge, which means they all seek security together. In other words, it means that you will find safety by being together in groups. Okay, a lot of times people always, when they are in danger, they will always work together. Why? Because they seek refuge in the herd. It basically means you will find safety by working together in a group. And that's the smart way to do things sometimes. All right, this scene is a really nice point scene where this old man, apparently one of the very famous characters, is giving advice to this man on how to play the game. What is his advice? Let's have a look. He says, play with them or they will play with you. A very common idiom. It was a Korean Id idiom, but in English it translates as man eats man. So man eats man is an idiom which basically means you should hold command in life or people will take advantage of you. In other words, they are saying do not be passive. Okay, so in life, you've got to take action. If you're not an action-oriented pe person, people will just take advantage of you and you will not be able to stand your ground because man eats man in the ruthless game of life. And the last scene in the movie, okay, uh, is the last, sh the last challenge where these two people, these two last, these two main characters, they play in the rain and the rain starts to fall. And one of the characters says, good rain knows the best time to fall. A nice idiom, what does it mean? It basically means everything happens at the right time. There is a right time for everything. And the last game required the rain, 
you know, to really get it all up and going, to get all the excitement going. So that was the idiom that was used and this is what it means, okay? Let's again use inference to guess the meaning of global hit. So the sentence is, Squid Game has become a global hit due to its popularity. What does it mean? Does it mean that a show is aired around the world? Or does it mean that the show is highly watched around the world? The clue is this word popularity. If the show is popular, it is highly watched around the world. And therefore, this is your correct answer. Now, let's look at another one. The internet stores worldwide have been flooded with orders for green track suits in the Squid Game and the pink jumpsuits which were worn by the cast. What do you think this means? The clues will be words like orders okay, and worldwide. So orders from around the world. What does it show? Are we talking about a huge flood? like a lot of water, or are we talking about a huge demand? Think about it. A lot of orders coming around the world. So basically, we're talking about a huge demand. All right, let's look at the other sentence and let me see if you can do some inferencing here. In fact, garment stores in Korea are struggling to keep up with the demand. What does it possibly mean when I say I'm struggling to keep up with the demand? Does it mean that I'm finding it difficult to keep things on top, top somewhere on top? Or does it mean that I'm finding it difficult to deliver according to the need? The clue is demand. If there is a demand, there is obviously going to be a need, which means that this has to be the correct answer. If I'm struggling to keep up, it means that I am finding it difficult to deliver according to the need. So this, these are the ways that you can actually use your TV shows and your movies, your English movies to learn new English phrases, all through inferencing. So if you have a problem with inferencing, make sure you, you read a good dictionary, you watch my videos and you learn English because inferencing is gonna help you guess and guess correctly so that your English gets better. I'll be back with some new lessons until then. This is me saying keep practicing, keep learning through inference. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.